Well, the thing is, we don't really have an intro because we don't know what this is yet. That's true. Right? It's like, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, we don't really have a name for what this is going to be or really even topics we're going to, you know, we have topics we want to cover, but we don't really have a concept of how, you yeah. know, what is it going to look like. We can just be like, hey, welcome um, to our first podcast. If you have any thoughts, comments, let us know in the comments. We're trying to figure it out. Yeah, I, I guess so. The purpose of this is the, the, where this podcast idea came from was me and Devin were meeting with a guy talking about football stuff and kind of just talking about everything in the world of football. And we went, man, no one else talks about this stuff because no one in our daily lives, we can talk to about this because no one else knows about this kind of stuff the Mm -hmm. way we do. Like no one can like reminisce about like, like we were reminiscing about Nike 2014 marketing for the, for the, for the cleats. Right. And that's kind of where this came from. Um, now, I guess to finish a story that I was talking to Devin about before we started was so Devin, if you see the reason I don't give is so the reason I'm building up the room and making so we actually have room for all this mm-hmm. stuff now is yeah, I'm not lending as much stuff to players. Um, so if you guys don't know the what me and Devin mostly do is a lot of our stuff I lend to players. We give, you know, if we get we get asked a lot of the time, like, oh, like, you know, you should give away all that stuff. And the answer is we do. Um, a lot of the stuff we get, if we get, you know, five pairs of cleats, normally try and give away four, um, to local teams and that kind of stuff. I used to give away even the fifth pair. Um, but I don't anymore because I found a couple times that it bit me. Um, and I even stopped lending stuff to players because I can't really trust them as much as I used to. So a great story is these Oregon cleats right here. I got this year, wherever those are. Yeah. Back there. Maybe if you're in portrait mode, you can't see them. Um, but I have uh, a pair of Oregon Ducks PEs and we had a kid this year for one of our football games uh, for the team I coached that forgot his cleats. Um, and of course, one of the coaches texted me and said, Hey, we need a pair of cleats. I was like, okay, <laughs> what size is he? And he was like, he's a, he's a 13. And, and this guy was a DN. And I was like, I have one pair of 13s. And it was these Oregon oh, Ducks. Cleats, right. And I was like, all right. Like our colorway is, is blue and gold mm-hmm. and black. And I was like, I guess you're wearing Oregon Ducks cleats today. So he wore them for the game. The point is, after the game, the kid didn't give them back to me for a couple of days. He left them in their joint high school locker room, where basically, which is not locked. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, where are my cleats? He's like, oh, they're in our locker room. And I went and just walked in and just took them. And they were just like, when you'd walk in, they stood out like a sore thumb yeah, on the good. shelf. And I was like, yeah, this is why I don't lend kids stuff anymore because there's kind of no respect for the fact that like a lot of the stuff we have, it's like, and I've also had stuff stolen in the past where like stuff I was supposed to be reviewing. I would, I gave two things. One of my earliest deals with Swartz Mm -hmm. Unlimited, I gave a kid a Mueller uh, cowboy collar and I think a visor or something, something, some small stuff to test. Um, and then the kid left the school and ghosted me and kept the stuff and it blew up that whole relationship with sports. Unlimited, right. So that's yeah, a lot of the time why we don't, yeah, I, or at least I don't really, if I have extras, I give it yeah. away. If it's one of one, I keep it in case we mm-hmm. need it. And I no longer for the majority of my time lend stuff because I can't really trust the kids. Yeah. Um, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, the goal is we'd like to talk about, what is happening with Nike football for this year? So we get asked a lot about, you know, every year, you know, what new is coming out. And today we want, basically want to talk about everything new that you can expect from Nike this year. And then next episode, maybe we'll cover Under Armour. Um, we might even rope Jordan into this conversation because you know, they are obviously synonymous with yeah. each other. Um, so I guess, Devin, what is coming out from Nike this year as far as cleats? So Nike for their Vapor Edge line has three new cleats. There's the Nike Vapor Edge 360 Speed 2s, which is the second version of the original. They have the Pro 2s, and then they have the Elite 2s. And then, as you guys saw, they dropped the uh, Nike Dunk cleats on Valentine's Day for 160. And, I mean, these everybody loves these. Um, we already did a full unboxing review on those. But I think that's it for cleats. Are they still selling the VCs? They must be, right? Yeah. So I I saw you can still pick up the Vapor Carbon um, on, I think I saw them on Dick's like a couple weeks ago. The, the, well, because they came out with the black and then later they came out with the wolf. Yeah, the gray, gray, right? Yeah. 
I people, everybody in my DMs is like, why won't they drop more colorways of these? And I'm right there with you guys. I have no idea why would they won't give us some simple, you know, white, blue, red colors of these cleats. Because people love these cleats. You know, they're a good pair of cleats. We reviewed them on the channel. Um, they did really well. And I don't know why Nike, you know, they went ahead with their Vapor Edge line and kind of just left these behind last year. Like, they're still coming. They still have a couple colorways, but they're just, they're not updated. They're not new. They don't match your team. And it kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, and I guess even worse this year from if you are a lineman, yeah. uh, you're getting even less than that. So this year they, again, no new, no new cleats for linemen. The only two you'll still have are going to be um, – let's see. What else they have? Yeah, everything should be the exact same from last year. So if you're a lineman this year, your options are still going to be the Alpha Menace um, Pro yeah. 3s. <clears throat> the Lunar Beast Elite TD 2s, and the Fort Savage Pro 2s. Yeah. Um, so those are going to be your only options this year. If you can find the, them. Uh, the Alpha Elite. The, the crazy thing is, it's it's not like, what I, what I found is, it's not like they're dropping these cleats, and there's like, oh, like, no, like, we're having the same cleats this year, and then we're going to, you know, we're going to do a restock. It's like, no, it's still these same cleats, but we have even less yeah. stock, yeah. right? Which is kind of the wild thing where it's like, I get hit up a lot, obviously, about bigger sizes of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, like your best bet is yeah. eBay right now, like legit, which is, or honestly, m more what I'm recommending now is um, uh, resellers, FB yeah. Lead Eat, college mm -hmm. football gear. Because I'm like, yeah, if you need bigger sizes, your best bet is actually going to be, and if is, is to be to find a PE like these. And, and if you can find a PE that like, you know, a university that matches your yeah. colorway, then that's actually your best bet to find cleats right now is going to be doing that. Um, which is pretty wild. What traction plate do you have? On so those organs, these organ ones, it is a, uh, it a is. rubber okay. bottom made for turf. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I have, I have two pairs of organ. I have these and then I have, uh, it's like a dark, dark green with like a gray secondary yeah. color. Right, I, they're downstairs, um, and then I have my actual pair, like my my retail yeah. pair, um, which are the black with the the menace traction plate. That's like um, a whole other conversation, you know, the difference between what PEs, you know, NFL and college schools get, and then what the public actually gets to buy. Yeah, yeah, and it's weird. Like, I didn't know as much about the PE world, obviously, before we started yeah. doing this. I knew I knew about it more in basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because it's but it's also easier to see in basketball because you know it's their guys, um, but and plus like peas, I feel like at least it's becoming more popular mm -hmm. in football. Absolutely. Um, so those are going to be the cleats that come out before we dive into that. What are going to be the gloves for this? So year? the gloves, uh, there's no new Nike football glove. Uh, you're still going to have the Nike Vapor Jet 7.0. They are going to come out with a couple new colorways. Uh, they have these really cool NRG colorways. There's like a a grayish yellow color and then there's a combine pair and then there's like a white with like this yellow explosion kind of thing and that same energy color is going to be on the cleats as well the elite twos at least i don't know about the pros and the speeds um but no new uh nike football glove except you get the jordan fly lock which we are going to drop a review on soon um but that's not really a nike glove that's like the first true jordan football glove and then, you know, you still have right. your super bad 6.0s and then your DTAC 5s, right? They're on 5 or 6. No, 5, right? Five. Yeah. <clears throat> so I got a bunch here. So these are going to be the super bad 6.0s. Same ones as the last two years. Yeah. They're a good glove. Yeah. So same ones last two years. No changes to these ones this year. Um, they're going to be doing a refresh in 2024 for the super bads. Yeah. So those will be new. Um, but for this year, it's going to be the same. You're going to have the same DTAC 5s for this year as mm -hmm. well. Or DTAC 6? DTAC 5? I think it's 5, right? Let me check. They've been I out for remember. forever. Dude. Okay. Have, when did they drop? DTAC 6 dropped in 2019. So they've been out for, this is the fourth yeah. year running. Yeah, so DTAC 6. Four years of those gloves. That's crazy. Um, the linemen are getting just disrespected. Yeah. I mean, the, the one thing that, honestly, like the DTAC is cool, but the one that everyone misses is going to be the hyper beast. Yeah. 
the Hyper Beast. Right. Yeah. The, the Hyper Beast was 2. released when I was in high school. Yeah. And yeah, right. And the thing that people don't like about the DTAX is the durability. Apparently, they're just not as, which it makes sense, they're not as beefy yeah. as the Hyper Beast. And so it's like people have been like, oh, like they ripped on me super fast. And it could be a lot of the mesh materials. And, you know, the reason they made a lighter glove after the fact was to make it you know, a little more breathable, maybe a little, you know, works for centers yeah. a little better because um, the Hyper Beast did not work at center um, mm-hmm. or barely. And so I could see why they moved in that direction. I guess our contact, we haven't, he didn't mention anything about a Hyper mm-hmm. Beast. Um, definitely just a detax or so definitely not getting the yeah, new Hyper Beast think, anytime Hyper soon. Beast um, so dead. these ones will be the same. Now, can you, then we have, what do we got? We have the Jordan Vapor Jets 7, same ones last year. Oh, yeah, this the year. Nike Vapor Jet 7, um, and then there's a Jordan brand version, which is essentially just a copy and paste, you know, new logo type deal. Right. Okay. So Jordan is coming out with their own stuff, but you can still buy the Borrow and Badge Jordan, Jordan Nike yeah. stuff? Okay. Can you still get the Jordan Knit? Jordan Knit. Or I is think that... so. I think, I mean, the, the stock is probably pretty limited. Because, I mean, I, yeah. I think Nike's, even Nike's website still has them, though. Especially, I, I've seen that black and gold colorway recently. Let me see. Knit 4.0. Also, do we want to talk about the um, the DTAC 7, which is kind of leaking right now? It's out and about. Yeah, so there is a there is a new glove. Oh, I don't know where the photo is. Did you is. post it on your Let's Instagram or no? Somebody did, right? No, we were gonna we were gonna joint oh, post it. Whoops. And it's in our messages <laughs> somewhere. We'll get to it. Yeah. So, can you? Uh, let's. How am I gonna find that photo? Let's see. I might have to send it yeah. to myself. But those those look pretty cool. I mean, I mean, after four years of waiting for them, they better come out with something cool, you know. So I guess while I pull this up and find it, do you? What are some of your first impressions on the new Jordan stuff? So, yeah, I mean, it's super exciting. Jordan's kind of branching off as their own brand. Um, it is kind of weird to see, you know, a Jumpman, a basketball logo on football equipment, but it works. I mean, Jordan has kind of went beyond the basketball space. You know, they've worked into the lifestyle space, now into the gridiron space, and it looks good. And they're coming out with good products. They are pretty expensive. These fly locks right here are $65 retail, which is definitely the most expensive um receiver glove we've ever seen by far um but they do have a nice knit material which is similar to what you saw in the jordan knit 4.0 they do have the elephant print palms and they're overall they're a really good glove um you guys should be excited to see the full review on these um but 65 bucks is kind of steep i think you really are paying for the logo if you you know pick up these gloves um and the colorways are also pretty limited as well they have a couple different white and red black and red white black and they have a blue pair, but there's no like unique colors. It's just kind of the simple um, run of the mill colorways, but they're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely need to get my hands yeah. on them too. We got to figure out how I to do I that. Send you a pair. I, like, I, um, saw the colors I guess yeah, for I those. That, <clears throat> yeah. I guess for some people that don't know, so me and Devin obviously work together, but I'm in Canada. Some people know, and Devin's in yes. Connecticut. So we face a lot of issues with getting samples for me just because being in Canada right now, it's way worse to get stuff across the border. Um, and it's mostly Canada's fault because they basically COVID and stuff, they increase a lot of their import fees. So like I pay 30% import fees ish normally. So I, I basically, I pay almost double. So if a product is 50 bucks us, I'm paying 30% on top of that to convert it to Canadian. And then on top of that, when it comes across the border, they'll say, okay, you know, the product's 80 bucks. You're going to owe us another $20 in import fees when it gets to your door. Um, which is also really tricky on my end because sometimes we have stuff show up and I don't know it's showing up. And, you know, UPS will be like, hey, uh, you owe us literally $100. And I don't even know what they have for me. And I literally have to pay it before I can even see what's in the box or who it's from or pay it before I can even go to UPS Jeez. to collect, which is wild. Um, but yeah, that's my fault. I chose to live here. Hey, you could always come down to Connecticut or not Connecticut, the uh, United States. <laughs> so, okay. So here are. Okay. 
Come on. Photos. This one. Okay, so here are the new uh, DTAC 7s that they're going to release next year. Now, we're going to start to see these with other players for uh, colleges this year. Uh, so colleges will be wearing them this year, and then maybe probably NFL will also yeah, be wearing them. them. This was at the Senior Bowl, um, which was earlier than I thought they would be starting to release them considering they won't come out to the public for a full year. Um, but these are them, and it's funny because we were talking about this, and this was one of the right ideas where I started to rant, was they don't – they have a pinky logo for Nike. The Nike logo used to live on this back of hand right here. Um, and even looking at them one-to-one, -one, I don't see – I see a – let's see. One, two, three, four pads on the hand. One, two, three, four. Same thumb split. Nike logo moved. Uh, so now here we have three pads where on the DTEC 7s we had one here at the Nike logo. So adding two pads here, uh, which means they'd have to change the way the thumb connects a little bit. The mesh would have to come a little bit wider. Unless they did something crazy with the grip, I don't see that as a four-year... Yeah. I mean, four years, it's, it's time tough frame to come to up with that something done. that's, you know, worth four years of time. But who knows how long and how much resources, you know, they've actually been devoting to the DTAC series, you know? Well, if you think about it, like, how much resources have they been putting into football yeah, at all? I mean, right? Not even, so if you take it and you look at it from... We already know linemen get shafted yeah. by most companies. That's kind of the way it is, right? I have a pair of a bunch of cutters pairs here, and cutters only has black yes. and white. And it used to be only linemen gloves are available in black. So anyone coming out with a white version was like a mm -hmm. big deal, right? Because linemen cleats used to only be black, and gloves were only black. Cutters, I understand, because they're a smaller company. So even if they're serving linemen and it's an even smaller subset, then they can't afford to have the cost of having all these different colorways and potential inventory. So that's how I understand how Nike can have yeah. four colorways, right? Or five. Um, but when you look at the receiver gloves, obviously they get refreshed. They have a bunch of colorways, they mm -hmm. do special stuff. Lyman, I doubt we'll ever get that stuff. And I've accepted that. And as long as we get team colorways, white, black, red, blue, maybe green, um, yeah. I can live with that. Um, but anyways, if, if you look at football or sorry, Nike as a whole, if you look at Lyman being a subset of that, if all of say if all of Nike is football has gone down by half, that means, you know, D or Lyman stuff will go down by like, it's such a small subset of that half. Then it'll, it'll go by down mm. by even more. Right. So that's why like Lyman stuff is not being refreshed. It's not being restocked. It's even harder if you're yeah. in Canada, like Canada, it's wild right now okay. trying to get football stuff. Um, so I think that's where a lot of that comes from. Um, but that was one of the things that we want to talk about today was I was rent, ranting to Devin about this, where we we still give Nike a lot of praise as being one of the industry mm -hmm. leaders uh, for football stuff, but it feels like they are slipping. And it feels like Nike, it's like, it's always been like, you know, Nike is a tier and then it goes like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, right? Especially since Under Armour is kind yeah. of backed out a little bit. Uh, of the football space. They're still in it, but it's not to the same extent as they, they used to be, you know, when they had, you know, Ray Lewis, mm -hmm. Tom Brady, some of these guys, they mm -hmm. felt like they were really on top mm -hmm. of the mountain back then. Um, but now Nike is king. But I feel like if they don't do more, they're going to keep slipping, right? So like Adidas, for example, they have the Adi Zero 13. Um, they have their prime knit versions. They have the Freaks, which have been uh, updated three yeah. years in a row. They have the Adi Zero line, which has been updated mm -hmm. three years in a row. And they're coming out with a bunch of really cool colorways and they're doing a lot as far as the football line goes. The way, the way I see, which I kind of feel like is it's not cheating, but I'm kind of getting sick of Nike is it feels like what they're doing is they're basically relying on all their legacy mm -hmm. branding to prop yeah. them up when their stuff isn't as good anymore. Like if you took, like say for example, we're talking about the cleats They've had the same edge traction plate, which was innovative mm -hmm. back in 2020. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But now it's on. They went, okay, so now we have this edge plate and they had it for mm -hmm. two years in a row. 
right? And then, then it's like, okay, so then they released the Vapor Carbons, which, again, was just taking an old, really successful cleat and strapping the same plate to it. So they're relying on something old to figure out, right? Which was super well yeah, received. Good cleats, but... Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, they had the yeah. Nike Dunks, which, again, took the same edge plate and then took the same vapor and then basically did yeah. a wrap of the Panda Dunk yeah. on it. And that's where I'm kind of like, as far as like no new super rads this year, no new vapor jet, um, no new D tac, no new Lyman cleats, uh, alpha menace, probably not new this year because they, they kind of split the release, which is weird where they yeah. came up with the alpha menace varsity and then the next, and they sucked. Like I, I hated them. Um, and then next year, but at the same time, they came up with the varsity, and then Derrick Henry was seen in the yeah. pros. Yeah, the, the right. Playoffs. And then last year, they released the pros and the elites. And the elites, I love. I think the the elites are like one yeah. of my favorite looking cleats. They look nice. um, the whole menace elite line, honestly, I, I love like the ones that Russ used to yeah. wear. Um, Me too. So like, and and Saquon. So I don't have an issue with that. Um, but it, yeah, it now I was like, like man, like Nike's not releasing a bunch of new stuff, and now it's like to fill time. They're getting into like the legacy brand with like Jordan. Yeah. Right. And it's like, that's how kind of, I feel about it is like, Oh, they're kind of disguising the fact that they're like mm -hmm. treading water by just taking the legacy stuff and then just strapping the same tech to it and then calling yes. it new and then using like the sneaker culture yeah. to build hype around it. I know you don't feel as strongly about it as me, but I, that's where I'm kind of like, man, like I know like it feels like Nike's doing stuff, but it feels like they're actually doing yeah. nothing. So for me, uh, 2010 to 2015 Nike football can't be topped. You know, their marketing, their cleats, everything they released, the colorways during that time period was amazing. And I feel like it's kind of tough to live up to that ridiculous hype that they created for themselves. And now they are, it just seemed like they're starting to devote less and less resources to football, which as football fans, is pretty sad to see. Um, uh, but they did drop the edge, the vapor edge stuff in 2020, and then they refreshed it here in 2023. As you guys see, here are the speeds, here are the pros. Um, they do do a lot of stuff for their athletes. For example, this is a Kyler Murray PE. You guys have hopefully seen the short on these, um, but it's I don't think they can go back and capture that same excitement that they had back in that you know 2010 to 2015 run with. You know some of the best cleats of all time. You got the OG Untouchables here, um, the the Vapor Carbon Flies. People love these. Uh, the OG uh, Vapor Carbon Elite 2014s. But they are trying to like when they released the uh, the VC Pro Tros, they kind of captured you know that same that same look and design from 2014. But it's it's not quite the same. You don't get that carbon fiber traction plate. Um, don't get me wrong. The edge plate is a great traction plate, and it's still you know pretty snappy, but I don't know, something about seeing this green carbon fiber on the bottom of your cleats is just, it looks awesome. Um, but yeah, they are, I do agree that they're kind of running off that legacy, especially, like I said, with the VCs, because it is, you know, just a reskin, retraction plate of a cleat that, that was already existed. And then the Panda Dunks kind of just living off the sneaker hype that the Dunks have created over the past, you know, couple of years. Um, don't get me wrong, I like that they did it but it doesn't really seem like they're really innovating. This is truly just a Panda Dunk upper on the liner of the Vapor Edge 360 Pro. So they're definitely, they're not doing it like they used to, you know, definitely. No, and like you think about like, because like Adidas is a yeah. good comparison because they don't have that mm -hmm. legacy brand yeah. to fall back on. So they're forced to innovate and keep making new stuff yeah. and keep refreshing. Whereas Nike can literally just be like, oh, like, yeah, we're going to make the same cleats and then we're going to tell, like, what am I trying to say here? They can have the same cleats and all they have to do is have sneaker or customizers yeah. paint them to look like iconic mm -hmm. Jordans and other Nike stuff. And all of a sudden they're this like crazy refresh. They're still on brand. It looks like obviously we cover a ton yeah. of it in cleat heat and we don't cover a ton of Adidas stuff because Adidas doesn't have mm -hmm. that legacy. Like they can still do some crazy stuff like Charlie yeah. does for Juju, right? Like they can still do 
his custom colorways mm-hmm. and stuff. And they can do, you know, funky, cool stuff with crystals or mm-hmm. whatever they want to do, but they can't do the legacy stuff where they turn a vapor edge into a yeah. Jordan nine, or even like when they released the Jordan nines, um, well, like five years ago or whatever it was, yeah, in public, it was six years ago. Um, you know what I mean? Like they can't, and like, it's crazy that I, this year I was like, Oh, like it feels like, you know, Nike blew up for cleats and, and like doing all this really cool stuff. But actually they, all they did was like, it feels like it was all the same stuff, but they just relied on all the, the cleat customizers to like carry their yeah. branding for this year with like, and like some of it they've taken and run with like, you know, Stefan, for example, like last year was doing all these like custom, you know, Jordan fives or whatever kind of cleats he was mm-hmm. doing. And it was paint. Whereas a lot of the customizers this year are actually getting into like reskinning yeah. cleats and actually mm-hmm. making a Jordan five. Right. So it's definitely leveling up, but I, it's, I feels like it's not leveling up on Nike's dollar. Um, this is what I want to show you. And like, this brings back so many memories to look at here. Let's see. Yeah. That's the picture. Like looking at, looking at like these marketing photos here. And I remember when like, these photos came out of like the different line that they were going to have. Like, where yeah. is the and one they dropped photo? them during the Super Bowl, so like the hype was at its pinnacle, you know. Yeah, like I, re- oh, the Super I remember Bowl all these marketing <laughs> photos that they had, like all the marketing photos and stuff that they had for the Vapor Untouchables that talked about yeah. all the different materials, and then yeah, like the photos of all the mm-hmm. different ones here. Like, this stuff was wild. Um, where is the, f- I wish I could find it. Cause I know the photo in my head. There was a photo of all three cleats in like the, the electric line yeah. colorway Volt, or whatever yeah. the, yeah, the Volt. Um, let's see if I can find it here. It was, if I look at maybe this one, cause it was around the same, it's yeah. kind of like this. I, I can see it in your head. In there it head. is. Yeah. It was like one of these. Like, do you remember when they were dropping these photos? I remember that was from the marketing right? material. That's when those, yeah, that's 2015. Yeah. Like, yeah, these the original Lunar Beast. Remember seeing those? Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Like, they're actually making Lyman cleats now. Yeah, like, it might be a conversation. Yeah. I, remember, I remember buying a pair of these. Right. I don't even know what happened to them. Um, yeah. And I remember just, man, when, when kids were wearing these yeah. like, untouchables on the field, it was like, holy man, like. Yeah, and even like the Super Bowl yeah, version with the so gold. They, do, they used to drop it right then. On like the these Bowl, ones? Yeah. That was Super Bowl 50, right? Yeah, like this stuff Broncos was wild. Seahawks, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I, I remember these were, this was yeah. a wild time. And it just isn't yeah. that anymore. Right? And so I'm like, okay, Can you go so back to that? that's kind of where Monk came Can you go back to that photo with the three cleats? If you can find it. Uh,. Let's see. Yeah, I just want to touch upon that left cleat. That's a that's the uh, the Calvin Johnson Megatron um, signature cleat, and you never really see signature football cleats anymore. So you know that's just kind of adds to our story. Like they're not doing it like they used to. You know. No, and that's where I was like, yeah, that's what we were talking about. Like, oh, they're coming out with so much cool stuff, like the Nike Dunk and yeah. the Nike Vapor Edge, and like, you know. But it's like they're actually yeah. doing nothing new. It's mm-hmm. all old. It's all old stuff that they're relying on and cleat customizers and other people to build hype behind and legacy brand. And don't get me wrong, I think I'd be more frustrated if they didn't drop the Jordan mm-hmm. Flylocks this year, right? Like. Because then it would just be okay another year where Jordan's evolved in football, but it's just it's yeah. a Borum badge, it's a reskin. Like it's not Jordan isn't in football. It's just it's a Nike product that's ten dollars yeah. more expensive, and it has the Jordan logo. Yeah, these the are Nike at least logo. new, so that's yeah, cool. like the vapor jet. But that's it, you know. Yeah, right. So that's cool. At least that it's like okay, so you know. But yeah, that's where I, I was kind of like, and I don't know what other people feel about it. And if you obviously if you're too young to remember the 2014s and what what was entailed with that yeah. i understand um but yeah that's kind of where i said is they need to do something cool next year or else i feel like there's going to yeah. be a steep drop off i mean if you just compare you know the marketing that we saw for these you know there was really any there's no you know 
the, all they did with these is they seeded them out to their athletes and they let them wear them in the game and post them on their Instagram story. But that's, you know, all we really saw, you know, but with these, you know, we just kind of showed you guys all the crazy different marketing photos. There's a whole, there's a whole, um, article just kind of breaking down every piece of the cleat and you just don't really see that anymore, you know? Yeah. And let's see the, I'm just reading this article. Nike wants to change the approach of it's all about providing a level of service that signature athletes want said their cleat design director, Ken link. If we do that, then we deliver that back. Let's see what I say. If we do that and deliver back to consumer, that's a level of service that no yeah. one else can deliver, which was true, right? Adidas was not on mm -hmm. their level back then, but now like, to be honest, I, Probably maybe my favorite cleats right now would be the prime. The freaks, the freak prime nets. Yeah. They're pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Right. And my, I love like coaching this year wearing, they're not the most uh, supportive cleat, yeah. but the freak ultras, yeah. the laceless. They still good. I love those. I wore those every day at practice and I love the laces. I was not wearing, especially for coaching. I'm not going to wear yeah. a lineman cleat and for coaching, uh, an edge is William wider feet and stuff. It's like, I don't need that level of spring and stiffness yeah. that the vapor line has. Right. And so it's like some, yeah, sometimes I'd wear my, you know, alphas, but like most of the time I was wearing my freaks or something. Cause they were just, I was gonna the boost was way boost, more comfortable. Yeah. They fit my feet better. The laceless was super cool tech, which again, isn't, you know, Jalen Ramsey wore like twice. And it was like, Oh, that's, Probably not yeah. the best idea to be wearing those, but still a cool idea to do laceless cleats. So it's like, that's where I feel like Adidas is just kind of edging Nike right now. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I agree with you for the most year, part, but then it seems like Adidas isn't coming out with the new Addy Zero this year. They're so they're re-rolling the 12. So what's going on? Maybe Adidas is cutting funding too. I don't know. But well, see, that's, and I thought we were, we'll get into that next episode, but I thought we were getting a new Ada Zero 13. I don't think so. As well. when, I, when I found their catalog, it was just the 12s again. They, there's a new freak, but no new Ada Zero. There's new Ada Zero Glove. There's new Ada Zero Glove. Was it? Okay. But not cleats. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have yeah. to review that catalog. And that's one of the things that Nike doesn't do that Adidas and Under Armour do do is they don't do they, a catalog. Yeah, you can't find them. They're right. So impossible. it's like, no, they're better yeah. at you know, keeping under wraps. So we don't really know what's coming for Nike. They could drop stuff yeah. later this year. Um, college football playoff that they will drop a vapor yeah. eight. I'm assuming uh, a DTAC seven. We already know is being worked. So that will be in the obviously. And that's like the only marketing, like, like literally like thinking back to the Nike marketing. Yeah. So with the Nike dunks, they mm -hmm. seeded it to their athletes. We had to go on the athletes stories on Instagram yeah, to find any anything yeah. about them. Doesn't make any sense. Right. There was a little bit, there was a couple marketing photos that they did. Like I remember on Instagram, like one that had kind of like the off white kind of pattern. Like it was kind of like the, the yeah. stripes, you know what I'm talking about? They did, they did like a, they did an That's, Instagram carousel. Yeah. That might be a fun idea in the future. So um, just kind of go through these different brands, Instagram pages, just to see how their marketing has changed. Yeah. The only post about yeah, the dunks well, is that it's like a three post carousel. It's just like pictures of it. Is there information? No, all they said was catch your favorite player in the Nike Vapor Edge Dunk this weekend. Available starting spring twenty three, which I guess is all the info all, eh, which I guess is all the information they needed to talk about. But so let's go here. Let's go share. Also they do they post a lot about the PEs that they gave Kyler Murray, which oh you're on it right now. But Yeah, so let's see. So you can't even buy. It doesn't make any sense. Travis yeah. Kelsey, right? Yeah. His PEs. Um, what are they talk about him. The college football playoff. What are we talking about here? Kind of their Super Bowl stuff. There's your dunk post. Yeah. So it's like if you actually think about. So this post was yeah four weeks ago. Right. Like if you think about how often some of these big brands are posting on Instagram, mm -hmm. like twice a day. Yeah. Right. And it's like, how does US Nike football only have mm -hmm. 870 yeah, posts? I think I have like 4,000. Like most, like you think about like, I, I'm not saying it's Bleach Report because Bleach Report's different yeah, because they mean. cover news and media and a bunch of shit, but they have like literally 40,000 posts. 
right? And most of these big companies have massive yeah, social they teams. Have so many it's like, working on this. Throw up a post a day, you know? It's, yeah, it's actually kind of wild. It's like, and look at, like, if you think about how long ago the Nike dunk was, I thought I would have to be scrolling a long time. This stuff was posted for the CFB. This stuff is Super Bowl. Yeah. And then that's it, right? Which is crazy because they have the Nike dunk. They didn't even repost the Nike dunk when it dropped in the spring. Yeah. So if you want to go find that information over the day it dropped, I think I had it posted on my page before. Yeah. It's like, this is. Like this is what you get. And you they, get one also, picture of the just cleats. For the record, those cleats are you edited. Get... Those photos are edited weird. There's no red on the cleat. Like that first image, it looked like I don't know if they used a filter or what, but it's like it looks red. You see that, right? A little like, like, like the back outline here? of the cleat has like these red details. Oh, yeah. I see. And I see I mean, the red right you through guys here. Have seen them by now, but there's there's yeah, no around red. here too. <laughs> so the picture, like I mean, they probably just edited. It's probably a certain style or whatever, but it doesn't look like how they look. And you can't even see like the green traction plate. They didn't no, highlight any like, of the details, like the ear doesn't swoosh or the details on the tongue. It's it's like a grainy photo, which is you know I don't I don't know enough to you know take pictures or edit photos, but I feel like it would be cooler if it was like a, a picture of what it actually is. Yeah, and you know it's weird because like even Yo know, Cooper Cup they highlighted his cleats. Um, even something I wanted to touch on was like we were doing these. We've been doing these PE yeah. videos for Nike yeah. with, you know, the, the gloves. And it's like, I was like, okay, so, you know, with Cooper Cup and Jalen and all these guys, like, I got to find photos of their VaporJet 7s because we were seated yeah. mostly VaporJet 7s. And most of them wore the 7s for like one week and then yeah, they returned like the to sixes. their 6s. Right? So Cooper Cup, like, could barely find photos of him in the 7s. If I, I don't think I found any. He definitely wore them. Um, I've seen them, but they, they might have been in the preseason. I, I definitely, if it's in there, it's in okay. my clip. I, I would have found them. But, like, Jalen went back to his sixes. Uh, Jamar wore a bunch of different ones, but a lot of sixes. Yeah, Jamar wore remember, a lot of right? sixes. I think Ramsey wore the sevens. Yeah, Ramsey wore the sevens a good bunch, I think. But Jamar stayed with the six. He, he, yeah, okay. Uh, our guide told us uh, Jamar warms up in the sevens, and then he also warmed up in the eights, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. But he always wore the sixes for game time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So yeah, they talked a little bit about Kyler that they were doing his, uh, yeah, that might like be a whole other turf. video is talking about, you know, how, you know, they're talking about these cleats, the diamond surfs, but the normal public can't get them, you know, but they're, yeah. Which is also weird that they're not marketing the fact that he had the, the vapor, dunks. uh, like oh, that the too, vapor yeah. edge pro yeah, twos. They, I don't, it doesn't, their whole strategy, it seems off to me. Which, like, why would they not market the ones that would be available yeah. to the public? Yeah, because he wore the vapor edge twos all year before right. the anybody even knew what they were. That's safe one, right? Well, that's Russ. That's Russ, my bad. Uh, this says, that's the Russ colorway. Yeah. The dangerous colorway. And when was this post? 18 weeks ago. Like, <laughs> this post. And like, this is, is that this is back the, the end of the, the year award. So that's when the they... Cooper Cup Triple Crown gloves, I think. Jalen Waddle gloves, Jamar Chase gloves. Right. So this is yep. back to the end of they last don't post year. A lot. Oh, here's the VCs now. It's really weird. And they they did like a. There's some videos and marketing that came out from the vapor yeah, jet guys from this. That. Like I, I remember where the that, videos. Yeah. yeah. Like we, we use this, I remember yeah. the video in some of our B-roll, um, but th- like the, they, like, they probably had Jamar T-Higgins. and yeah. uh, is that T Higgins? Who's <clears throat> that? Yeah. They had him out that day and like, they're like, all right, we got a bunch of B-roll and we got a couple photos of you guys. It's also Let's funny. They're in, we're they're in cleats that neither of them wear in game. They're in the 360 speeds, but neither of them wear those come game time. They just gave them a fit hmm. to put on. And they, I mean, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I don't get it. But anyways, that's the, was the point of this episode was Nike needs to do – it's just so weird because you, you, if you talk to anyone else, they would think that Nike was on top of the football world, but from like yeah. our perspective – I mean, they're, they're like on the top of the world. They're on top of the football equipment world, but they could be doing so much more. That's where I'm at because the stuff they have, the, the resources they have, yep. they could do so much more than what they're doing. And they just kind of choose not to or they don't yeah. you know devote the resources to it, um, which as – 
you know, equipment enthusiasts, it's kind of, it, it's a bummer to see because they can do so much. So much. Yeah, especially when you see some of the stuff they're willing to yeah, do for their guys. Yeah, like that's PDs. a whole other video. Like, obviously, for the general public, they can't do the they can't do the crazy stuff, which I get. Like, some of the stuff they do on the inside of gloves. But, like, I don't know. I just see I just see what Adidas is coming out with. Like, the mismatch yeah. stuff that we literally just covered. Like, doing all the stuff with, the like, the Memojis yeah, last year on the Velcro, 12s yeah. with, like, the patches. And that's, like, that's different culture than Nike. It's, you know, like, it's it's two different yeah two different philosophies right because i know what the adidas philosophy is we don't want a bunch we don't want to do a bunch of crazy stuff because then it's it shows that this stuff or sorry we don't want to do a bunch of crazy stuff for our mm-hmm. adidas athletes on the field because we do a bunch of crazy stuff for them it shows that the stuff that the public gets yeah, isn't the, cool I, enough I was, on its own. I was thinking if we were going to bring right. that up just kind of how they approach that you know yeah yeah so that's different right where nike is yeah. Do whatever Nike, you want. You know. Just don't disparage the brand. Right? Which is hilarious because I don't know if they've ever settled the thing with OBJ. This is um, funny. That was a big deal and then it went quiet and now it's all about him getting signed with the team. So I don't know if they're still fighting it. Yeah, or no, this is funny. Um, or... The other day I posted cleats of the or I posted uh posts of the Nike Vapor Edge 362 Elite. Um in the two colorways, the two NRG colorways. OBJ liked one of them. And then I went to look for it and it was gone. But I have a screenshot of the notification. So I'm thinking he's like, oh, this is cool. He liked it. And then he's like, wait a second. I'm suing Nike. I should probably unlike that. I don't know if that's true, but that's how I'm going to view it. But it was really cool to see. So you're talking about the Vapor Edge Elite. Elite. Yeah, the two I Energy posted. Colorway, yeah. I don't know when this video is yeah. going live, but it was, um, yeah. I got it right here. Yeah, but I have a notification that says OBJ liked your post. Like it happened. Let me let me show you guys. I don't know if it'll come up, but it's always it weird. When, like, and then I couldn't find it, so I don't know. But that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Those are cool, by the way. I think those are a really cool colorway, yeah, but yeah. I don't think it's something you can really wear on the field. Like that's not going to match any team the design is sick i love the design you know you can you can go through yeah they look really cool they have a lot of cool details the insoles on these are really cool there's a better pick of the insoles i think no there isn't what how did i mess that up yeah those are retailed at 210 bucks which is kind of outrageous that's the combine nrg pair Which is pretty cool. So when I first saw these, I thought they were a new mask yeah, right? for this. Um, yeah. They're, 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 a, a, little higher they're a little bit beefier in the back. Some more padding on the inside. I can't wait to get my hands on these because I'm just really curious. Yeah. Like if you look at the amount of padding, this is not yeah, standard weird, for their speed it, line. It kind of goes back to the uh, 2018 Nike Vapor Edge 360 Elite. Do you remember that? It was like a high cut, flying it. Um, ankle saquon barkley uh debuted it in the, that orange and yeah. white pair and yeah. that was kind of geared towards i feel like big skill players as well so maybe they're kind of going back to that i don't know yeah but why would why would you have that and then also have the I don't know. Uh, like i said we don't really know what they're doing over there right Nike. over at beaverton <laughs> beaverton beaverton oregon yeah but i mean the, the design is cool yeah. but again i just don't think you can really wear these with a team I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm outdated. You know, maybe the culture and the seven on seven stuff. You know, people wear whatever they want. I don't know. I just, yeah. I could see that. I could see seven on seven being more like break yeah. out whatever crazy the stuff you want. Sick, but two hundred ten bucks, like two hundred bucks, is already a lot. And then a ten dollar markup for the colorway. Jeez. So for me to get those would be yeah, over three hundred dollars. Because it'd be 210 plus 30% US plus international shipping would be at least another 20 to 30 US. So call it 50, 210, 230, 280. And then plus if I had some, it it depends on the company. Sometimes companies will do cheaper shipping. And then when they get to your door, you have to get the import fees. Whereas other companies will hike up the shipping cost like 40 or 50 bucks, but then include the import fees in there. So I'm guessing these would be between two eighty to three hundred dollars. 
That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess all we can do is wait. Um, we have obviously a bunch of reviews and videos and shorts and everything coming out about all this kind of stuff. We have, we have a review and an unboxing on the Nike Dunk. We have the shorts on the Dunk. It's on both of our channels. We have stuff on the Super Bads, the DTAX, the Vaporjet 7s, the Jordan line. We have stuff coming out about the Jordan Flylock. Um, and then the only things from Nike we'll have coming out this year would be uh, videos on the Speed. Um, Pro. And Elite. <clears throat> Pro. And the uh, Elite. Other than that, that'll be it from Nike. There's, yeah, there's a lot to cover. Um, there, are, there obviously was some Jordan stuff that unfortunately I, we're not yeah. allowed to talk about, which would have been super mm-hmm. sick if it came out this year, but it didn't. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, we can't really mention. Uh, which would have been really, and I was honestly pumped for it. I and still just, hope it we can get our happen. hands on the samples, you know, before they scrap the idea. I mean, if we can get the samples yeah. and just keep them. Sorry, you guys yeah. might not be able to see. Like I said, I could just put them on. Again, this is going to be, uh, you might not be able to see, but this is going to be a, uh, the pegboard that's is cool. four I gloves. think I might take that idea from you and get a pegboard and peg up some gloves. I used to have kind of a, a way to display them, but I didn't like it, so I took it all down. Yeah, you. I, yeah. I kind of took your idea, um, and then, but I just like the matte black look, so that's why I yeah, went I gotta to, go to IKEA yeah. and those pegboards are matte black, and you can get little, little hangers. Yeah, and I, I was like, oh, it, that'll be a cool way to. Yeah, I had this one dollar phone that. board from the dollar store, and then just tax and wire hang them up. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, you but like the tax that. would like fall out because yeah. it's just foam, so it kind of got tough to keep up with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that's going to be it for today. If you guys have any ideas for what you want us to talk about in the future, obviously let us know down below. And if you did stick around this long, <laughs> that'd be super cool. I like doing the podcast idea and I think I'm going to see if I can get this put oh, yeah. up on Spotify, Apple music or sorry, Apple podcast. And I'll figure out that in next. Um, no, yeah, thank Devin, you guys. You guys have any you know, ideas how we can do better? What kind of stuff you guys want to see us talk about? Let us know, you know, we're kind of new in this whole podcast world. So hope you guys did enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Cool. Sounds good. All right. See you guys.